Okay, so here we're going to go over the two different systems um, that form the basis of different CFD analysis. When it's fixed in space, we call it Eulerian, and when it's um, attached to a moving particle, we call it a Lagrangian method. And in this example, we're going to consider this control volume here, where uh, we have three incremental directions, dx, uh, dy, and dz. And we're going to equate the net mass flux out of the control volume to the rate of decrease of mass inside the control volume. And this, if, to start with, is probably the easiest one. This is just a negative. It's the rate of decrease, d rho dt, where rho is a mass per unit volume, density. So, as you can imagine, in for incompressible flows, this is zero. Um, because there's no... Uh, decrease of mass inside the control volume. So all you need to look at is the balance of flux in and out of the control volume. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. So we've got our control volume. And to start with, we're going to look first in the x direction. So we're going to say, okay, what's the mass that crosses the face in the x direction? And then what's the mass that leaves the face the other side of the control volume? So over the course of that distance, which is dx, the mass changes, or the mass flux changes from rho u to <coughs> rho u plus d rho u dx times the distance dx, which is what we have here. So this is how much it changes from one side to the other, and to find that total. <coughs> Um, amount of mass on each face we can see that this if we times that by the area dz dy which is this face then you get this term and we take away this times the same area um, in this term so one minus the other gives us um, the net flux of mass in the x direction. And this, if you look at it, this term and this term uh, cancel out. So all you're left with is this term, dx, so d rho u dx times the three incremental distances, which is this here. Now this, of course, is just in one direction. So this term represents just the x direction. And we can do the same for the y direction, where we consider the net mass flux in the y direction, and the same in the z direction, where we consider the net mass flux in the z direction as well. So in this one, in this case, it's moving up a direction dy, and here it's over a direction dz. And you get these extra two terms, resulting uh, from those two analysis. And you equate that to this, which is the net, the, the rate of decrease of mass inside the control volume. And you have the final expression for the, the continuity in an Eulerian reference frame. So finally, um, you can gather this up by saying that this you divide 3 by the volume, so you have this term here from on the right-hand side, and this term here can be condensed to be div of rho u, the vector, because div operator uh, takes the vector component of both the gradient and the vector velocity vector and sums it. So this is u, x, v, y, and w, z. And this is entirely equivalent, this and this. Another way of writing that is by taking this over to the left hand side and this is what you have at the bottom, this continuity. Now, in contrast, if you consider a, uh, a moving particle frame of reference, then you're going to be looking at a Lagrangian system. And in this case, you have a quantity phi which is a function of time and the three spatial 
coordinate systems, and you look to find the total derivative, so the total or the substantive derivative, and that uh, can be found directly for the first term, but then is found using the chain rule for each of the coordinate directions. So you have dz dt, dy dt, and dx dt, and in order to get back into something that relates phi to t, as is the definition of the total derivative, you need to have d phi dx times by dx dt, and that's the chain rule. Now, if you look closely, this is u, and this is v, and this is w, the definitions of the three velocities. And then, of course, you can just simplify that expression by replacing those derivatives with their velocities. And you can, then you're left with the definition of the total derivative, d phi dt is equal to partial d phi dt plus u dot grad phi. Now, in order to equate this to the Eulerian frame, we need to consider them side by side. So here we can see them side by side. This is the Eulerian uh, definition of a continuity equation, and this is the Lagrangian definition. And on first glance, they don't look to be the same. Now, uh, combining the what we've seen from the previous slide, let me demonstrate that they are, they are in fact exactly the same. First of all, if we consider the Lagrangian uh, uh, definition and look at the total derivative, let me write that out. So making the substitution from the previous slide that total derivative of rho with respect to time is equal to this in the, in the square brackets, if we then add it to it, this extra term here, then this should be equal to zero. Now, to show that this is in fact the same as this, we need to consider the product rule to expand this term, which can be done using standard uh, rules for the, the derivative of a product. So you start and you take the derivative of rho times u is derivative of rho times derivative of u plus derivative of, so plus u dot product the derivative of rho. And you can see then that this is exactly the same as this term, and so the two become equivalent. But note, because of the way that they are natively, if you like, um, written, the Eulerian is referred to the conservative form because rho u is already in its conservative definition, and the Lagrangian is referred to as a non-conservative form because it's split. One part of the... Um, continuity, the, the convection is on its own, whereas the other part is absorbed into the total derivative. 